Deuce McAllister joins us live here in the Superdome. And Deuce, uh, the Saints never trailed in this game, but the energy and the tempo wasn't quite there in the first half as much as it was in the second. Uh, overall, uh, what are your reactions of the Saints' to playoff uh, opening win here? Well, I wasn't too concerned as far as the energy. I thought the energy was fine. You know, I thought that they just missed some opportunities, particularly early in that game. That second half, obviously, you go out there with a seven-minute drive, you go out there with an eight-minute drive. That definitely, you know, is a statement. I just thought they missed – uh, too many opportunities early on. And it, it was just little things that were hurting them, you know, particularly the games that uh, up front that they were playing with the tackle ends. We didn't do a good job of picking those up. You know, it was just too many opportunities that we were kind of uh, making that game a lot closer than it was or it should have been. And, you know, at the half, I think they ended up with like 105 total yards. And, you know, it was just you, you, you're beating them in too many situations only to have seven points at the half. I've talked to Breeze, I've talked to Deontay Harris, and Demario Davis, both sides of the football, all three phases. Nobody's making excuses, but it was great to get everybody back. But at the same time, is it a challenge trying to get the rhythm back and maybe shaking off some rust, especially if you're Michael Thomas? I know Kamara's only missed a week, but uh, you know, getting the whole platter back, is that kind of a challenge, even though it's good news getting them back? Well, it's definitely a challenge, and that's really why I thought that they would lean on Emmanuel Sanders a lot more just because he's been available. He's been there, and so when you try to work those other guys in, it, 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 it's difficult. And so, you know, the one guy that we we, we saw that had that fire was uh, Deontay Harris, you know, yeah. and it, I, there was no way that you could have told me that he was going to have that type of impact, mm -hmm. that type of a game. And, you know, they got him the football, and he's just making people miss. He's making moves. He's just – He's explosive, and so uh, it's good to have him back. But, no, I, I didn't think that it would, you know, be him making those type of impact plays. If, if at all, it would have been on special teams, not in the manner that it was. Deuce, for years, the calling card's been offense in the Sean Payton, Drew Brees era. But can you say enough about the defense? I mean, they only allow one third down conversion. Really, from start to finish, uh, they were causing havoc out there. Well, they definitely were causing hazard, havoc, and you could see they were frustrating Trubisky, got their hands on a couple footballs. You would wish they had to come up with them. Uh, but, you know, overall, I thought they did exactly what they wanted to do and needed to do. Uh, a couple times they were closing in that pocket. They just couldn't bring him down. But I thought that they frustrated him enough to make him uncomfortable in the pocket. And then, you know, it, it was going to be about stopping the run, taking the run away. Could you do that? Once they did that, it was all on Mitch, and they just didn't have the weapons, and he couldn't get it done. I just talked to Breeze. You know, he's happy with the win, but you know how he is, the perfectionist. He's still ticked off. He didn't get that up and over at the end. Given his injury, given that the game was under control, were you surprised that they had that play call and they didn't just have him hand the ball off? I didn't like this quarterback sneak. I didn't like the up and over, but that just tells you he's feeling a lot better. I mean, for them to <laughs> put him at risk or at least to go out there and do those things, that tells you he's, he's feeling fine. Let's talk about this next game. Uh, you know, you could be more candid than the players, but I give the players a lot of credit. I try to get an answer out of them. Is it an advantage you've beaten the Bucs twice? What's the key against Brady? They say, man, this is the playoffs. It's not the regular season. But as a former player, if you beat a team twice, you face them again in the playoffs, is there any advantage to that mentally anyway? Well, mentally, it tells you that you can do it, but I think they feel like they can do it anyway, though. I think it just comes down to matchups, and I think the Saints match up really well against the Bucks. And so when you go and look at how they play, how they like to play, it's just a game of matchups, and the Saints really match up well. They have enough corners to cover all those elite receivers they have. They can pressure the quarterback and really don't have to send a lot of guys. And so at the end of the day, it's all about matchups, and I think you know the, the Saints like where they are in this matchup. Final question, uh, you know, it just I had, a, I had a gut feeling these teams would meet again. I don't know how you felt even after the 38-3 win. You knew the, the Bucks were probably a playoff team. It just seemed like it was meant to be these teams play again. I just kind of had that feeling during the year. You would probably think it was in, a, uh, in the conference championship game, not the divisional round. Yeah. Exactly. Not surprised to see them at all as far as, you know, in the playoffs. We figured that that that, that would be the case. And so here we are. Juice, we have mastered the Zoom. You are well lit. You look great. I appreciate your time. And, of course, we'll talk to you next week. Uh, thank you very much. No problem. Thanks, Mike.